Well, Ed is homesick today, so it's just me. But look at what is inside of Shakira, our Xanthic Het Patternless Females cage. I just gave her a lay box yesterday, and apparently it was perfect timing because she laid eggs. <laughs> And not only did Shakira lay eggs overnight, Dottie, one of the Brad and Janet babies who was breeding or repaired for the first time this year, also laid eggs. Oh my gosh, those look great, Dottie. Congratulations. Looks like she is done laying too. So we're going to, I guess, collect two clutches of eggs together, just you viewers and myself. And we're gonna start with Shakira. Hello, where's your face? There's your face. Shakira, you did it. You laid eggs. Are you done? Did you get them all out? Yeah, looks like she did actually. From what I can tell, nope, you can't eat me, sorry. I'll feed you later, how about that? But for now, I just have to take the, don't eat me, don't do it. I see that face. Don't try to eat me, please. I'm gonna trust you. I'm just gonna come on in and take this whole clump. Okay, we're gonna set it there. And then, hi pretty girl, I need that last egg that happens to be right by your face. Is it okay if I just uh, sneak in and uh, thank you, thank you ma'am. Okay, you can just be left alone in there. Good job mama. I'm gonna take all of these. Oh my gosh, that's so many eggs. This is so hard to do with one hand. Wow. Okay, we're gonna just, I guess, set them here for now and the one. <laughs> and I'll get some stuff ready for incubation. I'm actually here today because we're in between curators, so I'm filling in and doing the reptile feeding and cleaning, just reptile chores, so. I was planning on doing all that today. I have my chlorohex, I've got vinegar for cleaning pennies, all the stuff to take care of them, steam cleaners down there. But you know what? We're gonna change gears and switch over to eggs. This is very exciting. So the first thing we need is, let's grab a container for them. I think they'll fit in here. This will work and this has no ventilation, that's perfect, okay? I might drill like two holes in the side of that new one, just so there's a little bit of ventilation. So let's do that first. Ta-da, ventilation, you don't need much for eggs. Also birthday flowers from Link. Thanks Link. All right, we have our container for eggs and then perlite, there it is, perfect. Got our perlite and now we have water for the perlite. And now we just have to turn on the camera. You get kind of behind the scenes here. And yes, our camera is still broken. I have to turn it on with a pen. Ta-da! All right, let's get filming. All right, we have a beautiful clutch of eggs that was laid by Shakira, and she is Xanthic Het Patternless. And we paired her this year for the first time to Orange Creamsicle, who is a Hypo Patternless. So with those genetics, I don't think his Hypo will pass on, because as far as we know, Shakira isn't Het Hypo, and that's a recessive trait. So it needs a copy from both parents in order to show in the young. But he is patternless, as you can see. There's no pattern to be seen on him. So with him being patternless and her being Het Patternless, that means that each egg has a 50% probability of creating a patternless baby. So let's see, how many are in here? We've got 12 eggs. So of these 12 eggs, we should theoretically get six patternless babies. And they'll all be het uh, exanthic, cause mom is exanthic, and they'll be het hypo, cause dad is also hypo. We're gonna have some really pretty babies in here. Some, some really nice patternless again, I bet. So let's get them set up. All right, we have our incubation box. We've got perlite. Now to add some water. Does it pass the clump test? It does, hooray. Okay, now we have to make 12 little divots. Hopefully, hopefully I can fit all 12 eggs in here. And I think what I'm gonna do, even though we have been incubating a lot of the eggs this year in clumps, it seems like they, some just aren't getting enough moisture and others are getting too much moisture. So today anyway, and I think for the rest of the season, if I can, I am gonna start separating the eggs. But you know, it was a good little experiment to see if they could be incubated in a clump. I think some of them were just such big clumps that there wasn't enough evenly distributed humidity and or temperature. So for these, since they're so fresh, I am gonna split them up just because they are able to be split at this point. But you know what? I think our perlite is a little bit shallow. I'm gonna add a little bit more first. There we go, I think that'll be better. All right, here's our single egg. 
That was detached, I guess mom's least favorite child. And now for the rest of them. Okay, now the tough part is actually separating these eggs, but it is kind of satisfying to watch that adhesive is actually added by mom to keep the eggs still throughout incubation. Because what they do in the wild is they lay this clump of eggs and then they just leave them behind, never to be seen by mom again. So she just has to set them up for success as best as she can. But that, that adhesive is, it's pretty sticky. It does hold them together quite well. So it can get a little tricky to detach them, but it seems to be the easiest to do so on day one. So that's why we're putting them into incubation right away and peeling them apart is a lot easier today than it would be tomorrow. It looks like I'm actually gonna run out of space if I detach all of these. So I'm gonna take that one off but then these two, I think I'm gonna leave together just so I have enough room for them all in this tray. And since they are horizontally connected, or there's you know only two dimensions here, not a third, that their third dimension of volume that they're taking up, they should be fine because they all are making uh, an appropriate amount of contact with the perlite. So there we go. We have our clutch all set up, ready for marking, which is the next step. The top side of the egg, we're going to mark with a Sharpie. And we're, go we're gonna do this because uh, in case something were to happen, if they rolled over, heaven forbid, I drop this container on the way to the incubator, then we'll still know which side is up. So instead of doing an X though with a Sharpie, that's kind of boring. A lot of breeders will do an X or a line. We like to keep things interesting at Snake Discovery. So what's something that, what's a theme I could draw that comes in one dozen. Okay, the theme for this clutch is going to be things that are sold by the dozen, like eggs and muffins or donuts, stuff like that. So we're gonna start with actually those three since I gave them away. Well, let's say we've got eggs are sold by the dozen. Ooh, donuts with, of course, gotta have sprinkles on the donut. Muffins are sold by the dozen. Let's see how long we can keep this up. Okay guys, this is supposed to be a rose, so pretend it's a rose with a long stem. That's good. There we go. There, it's a beer bottle, guys. Beer sold by the dozen. Okay, we're starting to get desperate and I'm, we're not even halfway there. Or we are halfway there now. This is a partridge in a pear tree for the 12 yeah. days of Christmas. Okay, this is a hornworm because our hornworms in the store are sold by 12. And on that same note, the crickets we sell are also sold sometimes by the dozen. Yeah, sometimes singly too, it's whatever people want. But some people order them by the dozen, so a cricket. Yeah, that's supposed to be a pop can, because pop is sold in cans by the dozen. We're going with it. Cookies are often sold by the dozen. Socks are sold by the dozen. Corn is sold by the dozen. And batteries. Ta-da! Our thing is sold by the dozen. Dozen egg clutch. So now we have our lid. And this was from Shakira and we're gonna shorten it to OC Orange Creamsicle on 511. Into the incubator. Do, do, do. Are we gonna have room? Oh, that almost fell through. Are we gonna have room? Um, oh, if we shift this there, no. Maybe if this goes down here. Oh, there's room. Okay, perfect. Now let's go in there. Ta-da! And fitting in the next clutch is future Emily's problem. All right, so now back over here. Dottie! Hello, Dottie! Dottie is known for having an attitude, aren't you? Are you, are you okay? Doing all right in there? Oh, you're giving me that look. You want to eat me, don't you? That's okay. Oh my gosh, look at those beautiful eggs. Did you get them all out? Are you good, girl? Yeah, there's definitely nothing in there. You would definitely be able to see a bulge or something down here if she had something still in her. So yeah, she got them all out. She looks so tired. Girl, you're never this nice. Oh, there's the attitude. You're just too tired to, to come at me. All right, I'll leave you alone. Yep, sorry, sorry. You can just relax. I will leave you. Oh, geez, don't push me away. I'm sorry. Here. I'll move those there. Uh, actually, wow, you just kind of scattered them, didn't you? We're gonna collect these for now and put them on our cart. 
Okay, and now we're gonna come back. And, hmm, how do I take these out without you pushing me? How about, can you push this way? Tickle, 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 move your body this way. Oh, you know where your eggs are, don't you? Nah, she's just uh, trying to be a jerk. Oh, stop pushing, stop pushing. Eh. Okay, got these. <laughs> gonna put them over here. All right, we're gonna cover you up and give you a well-deserved break. You just relax for the rest of the day. I'll give you a snack later on as a reward. There you go, Dottie. Dottie, who we're going to leave alone because of how tired she is, just like all females are after laying eggs, was paired with Barnaby for her first breeding season. Barnaby is a beautiful male, of course, bull snake, who is hypomelanistic, which that, that morph actually reduces black pigmentation. Not enough that, or not as much as the albino mutation does. So that's why you do still see some browns in his scales. But the hypomelanistic mutation removes enough of it to make them look brighter yellow in color and their blacks turn brown so as you can see his saddles are not black they are in fact brown so this when mixed with albino makes a beautiful combination as you saw with rocket our bull snake earlier this year but yeah this is Barnaby he is gorgeous he is gonna be the dad looks like he did his job because these eggs all look white and fertile so we are going to now get them set up in incubation too so this clutch is going to be an experimental clutch since all the babies are going to be normals and het hypo because dad is hypo not that they're worth less they're still bull snakes and of course we want them still to hatch but we do want to do some learning with this clutch we would like for science to experiment with something we've been curious about for a couple of years and actually a fan who's also a researcher named kate reached out and she actually calculated the hatch rates of all of our eggs that had black sharpie used as the indicator on top versus colored sharpie and she determined over the last two years of data points that eggs with a black sharpie with outliers removed had an 88% chance of hatching, which is a pretty good chance. That's about a normal chance as if or compared to if they weren't marked at all, because some eggs just go bad in the wild uh, as well. So it seems pretty safe, you know, to use black sharpie on the eggs. However, when using colors, it appears as though the hatch rate for those eggs is lower, or there's a less chance of, uh, or there's a smaller chance of those eggs hatching, specifically with orange. Now, granted, there are fewer eggs that had colored markers on them than the black markered eggs, so it could just be a coincidence. There are fewer data points, but you know what? We want to put this to the test and learn for sure if using different colors actually changes the hatch rate or success rate for the eggs. And we're gonna do one color at a time. So this year, 2023, we are going to be testing the color orange. And the reason for that is because of five eggs, again, not many eggs, not a huge data set, but of five eggs that were marked with orange, I believe all last year we started using different colors, none of them hatched. So another thing to keep in mind is a lot of the eggs last year were from first time moms. So I know I used orange on some false water cobra eggs and some of her eggs developed with orange, but didn't hatch in the end. So we're gonna, again, put it to the test and see if, so we're gonna, again, put it to the test and see if the color orange does in fact reduce the chance of the egg hatching. And if it does, we're not gonna use orange anymore. If it doesn't seem to affect them, then we're gonna continue using it and just assume that it was probably just a weird coincidence thus far. So let's set up our experiment. All right, we have our clutch set up in the perlite as always. Unfortunately, there's an odd number of eggs, so I can't split this clutch up evenly or exactly evenly. We have, uh, we're gonna have a group of five and a group of six eggs for this experiment. For the group of five, which I think I think these five are gonna be the control eggs. I'm just going to draw to keep all the designs the same and reduce the variable of having different shapes and different designs on the eggs. We're just gonna draw a, an, an approximately one by one centimeter square on top of the eggs. All right, so there we go. Control eggs are marked. And now for the remaining six, I'm gonna do the same size square in the same location, but with orange marker. Okay, there we go. Our test is set up. It looks very Halloween-y now that I look at it all together. So the reason why we have control eggs is because if I marked them all as orange and they all went bad, that could either mean that the orange marker is detrimental to the egg's hatch rate or maybe something else happened, maybe the temperature was off. But now, since we have uh, two different sets, essentially, of these eggs, if 
all six, or you know, a decent number of these don't end up hatching, but all of these do, there's a pretty concise or pretty strong argument that the pigment in the marker does affect the hatch success. So now we are going to put our lid on. These are Dottie and Barnaby's eggs laid on 511. Now into the incubator. I don't know, future Emily's problem became right now's problem. How am I gonna fit that in here? Let's see, I want it to be in the middle of the incubator. So it's a nice middle range for incubation. Oh, perfect, that can go back there. You can go here. This can go, oh man, I don't know. This can go down here. Perfect, it fits! Okay, and now these can go right up here. Nice. Okay, eggs are cooking, and I cannot wait to see the results of this experiment. Here is Dad one more time to kind of end this video for us. But yeah, let me know your thoughts, your hypothesis in the comments below on if you think the orange marker's pigment uh, is actually gonna affect the egg hatch rate or not. Maybe it'll be the same hatch rate as the black marker. Unfortunately, there is another variable to consider with this clutch. These are Dottie's first ever eggs, and usually first time moms don't have the best success rate with those eggs. But if they all die, I guess, or if all the eggs just mold in incubation, we'll know it wasn't caused by the orange because there'll be some black marked eggs in there too. And instead it's something else that caused them not to hatch. So anyway, put your hypothesis in the comments below. My hypothesis is that the pigment will not affect the hatch rate. I personally feel that the color or the pigment used for the color of the different markers doesn't penetrate the shell or at least enough to affect the baby's health. I think they will all hatch at a normal rate and it was just kind of a coincidence thus far with the previous eggs. Um, but yeah, let me know your thoughts. We're gonna learn something new this year as we always try to do at Snake Discovery because there's always something more to learn when it comes to reptiles and amphibians. So thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, I, I can't wait to see this clutch develop and hopefully all hatch. I guess we'll find out in 55 to 60 days. Thank you Patreon backers for your amazing support as well and we'll see you next time.